Well, when it comes to saving people who are trapped by an earthquake, timing can be the difference between life and death. We take a look now at robotic equipment and drones designed to make it easier to locate and rescue people who are caught under the rubble. In the race to save people trapped under rubble after a disaster, every minute counts. As time passes, the chances of survival drop and death tolls climb. Teams have to locate victims as quickly as possible in a shifting, unstable landscape. A European and Japanese project called Cursor has developed a platform to reduce risk. The new technology, we are aiming to increase the safety of first responders, providing remote uh, access to the work site, remote uh, uh, working conditions. And secondly, uh, with the technology, we are improving the, the, the speed of uh, detecting victims. The Cursor project seeks to streamline search and rescue by combining different technologies as elements in a single integrated system. For work on the ground, the researchers developed what they called soft miniaturized underground robotic finders, or Smurfs. The Smurfs is this kind of robot here um, that is equipped with different cameras like RGB cameras, two pieces, uh, we have thermal cameras and we also have lights on so that we can take this robot into a collapsed building and search for victims. In the future, clusters of the semi-autonomous little robots could penetrate deep into collapsed buildings, outfitted with chemical noses that help them sniff out survivors. As the Smurfs roll into the wreckage, they'll also receive information from sensors called geophones, placed by emergency personnel to listen for survivors. They can detect sounds like regular tapping or voices in shallow rubble. Activities extend into the sky with special drones hovering in the air above the disaster site. Some are designed to map it in three dimensions. Others carry ground-penetrating radar to detect empty spaces and piles of rubble that might house survivors. Still others are designed to carry and drop Smurfs right where they're needed. And finally, there's a larger mothership drone to coordinate activities between the different elements in the system. The platform still needs some work, though. Due to the fact that we have such a complex uh, technologies and, and different maturity of uh, technologies, then uh, it's difficult to say when exactly these components are on the market. Earthquakes like the one in Turkey and Syria claim thousands of lives, but Cursor and other search and rescue projects like it are working to make a difference one day for at least some of the victims trapped beneath the rubble. And I'm joined now by the project coordinator, Tina Ristme. Tina, it's good to have you on the program. This project, uh, the technology with Cursor, is exactly what is needed right now in Turkey and Syria. Are there, are there any drones or robots developed through Cursor that are headed for the earthquake zone yet? Uh, no, unfortunately not, because we are working with prototypes. So this is a research project and yes, we are, we are uh, not so far yet to provide uh, market ready products. Well, well, talk to me about how once the, the, the project you know, is ready to be deployed, how will these drones be able to detect people that have been buried in the rubble um, after an earthquake? So we have different uh, technologies for detecting um, earthquake victims or, or gas explosion victims, victims under collapsed buildings, basically. So we have the Cursor in the air part, which indeed consists of several drones. Uh, these drones are actually meant to, get, uh, to, to, to be used to get quick information from the work site. Mm -hmm. uh, to understand how big is the damage, to plan the resources, to, to see what are the damages, are the buildings safe for first responder to enter. Th this, this is the main, main functionality for the drones. They have other sensors like thermal cameras, which also allow to de detect victims, but um, it depends on the weather and it depends on the building materials. So. Um, therefore, we have also uh, developed robots, uh, Smurfs, soft miniaturized underground robots, 
which um, which are used to detect victims under the rubble pile. The robots have different sensors, um, audio, video uh, components. So we are we are able to speak with victims, uh, with people under the rubble. Wow. And uh, the robots also have um, so-called artificial dog nose, which allows uh, us to detect victims uh, by sniffing the air and detecting uh, specific proteins that uh, human beings are emitting. Wow. And thereby mm -hmm. confirming are there people inside or not, and even making a differentiation if the person is alive or dead. That, 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 that's amazing. I, and I assume then that these Smurfs, these robots, would be on the front lines in a disaster, and they would even be sent in before we would send in dogs that we usually send in to, to sniff out people, right? Um, they um, actually um, support each other. So dogs mm -hmm. are very quick, and, and dogs will remain as a first tool, or, or not a technology, but solution for first responders to use. Uh, but dogs cannot go everywhere, and yeah. in some cases, it's even uh, it's so dangerous that that it's not possible to uh, send dogs there, or there is gas leaks or or glass in the rubble. So for these kind of cases, we can use the robots, uh, which uh, which provide information uh, if human beings are under the rubble pile. And Tita, before we run out of time, I just, I just want to get your thought about this. I mean, this seems to be a true story of cross-border cooperation, where you're bringing the best minds from across the European Union um, together. I mean, it's, it's a project that's really working. Yes, uh, it's, it's a really a um, very, very bright collaboration. We have from Europe, uh, six countries, we have a collaboration with Japan. Uh, their knowledge and expertise about earthquakes is very, very relevant and has helped us a lot. And yes, it's, um, it's a really collaborative project. <clears throat> Cursor coordinator, Tina Ristme. Tina, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us and to share with the world, you know, the exciting news about how this technology is coming together. Thank you.